Hello awesome people, what is going on? It is Brad Fusion here and welcome to Halo Online. At least kind of anyways. So just the other day Halo Online was announced to come out on PC in Russia only as a free to play title. Now a few days after this was announced the game files were actually leaked. Now a bunch of modders had worked together to try and get this game up and running and they are still currently working on the multiplayer aspect as well as removing the free to play bullshit that the original game was going to have. Now let me talk about the original game itself, and again, I did mention that it was a Russia only title, at least that's what they said initially. They did say that of course if other if it came to it they would release it in other countries and they might change their payment model, which is great because the payment model as it stands is rather kind of terrible. Obviously I don't speak for everyone when saying that, I speak just as my own opinion as I have a certain disliking to certain free to play models. And the certain free to play models that they've implemented into this game, or at least what they will implement into this game, I don't like. So let me go over the basics for it anyways. The free to play model obviously has a premium currency as a lot of games tend to do and I don't actually mind premium currency that much as obviously you can buy things early on or quite easily with a premium currency or you just grind out a little bit longer to earn it with your in-game normal currency and again I am perfectly fine with this. Now on top of premium currency they have rental weapons and armor, at least the armor has been confirmed, I'm not, too, not entirely too sure about the weapons themselves, though I do believe you earn weapons as you level up and so on. But again there's very little details into this subject right now. Now rental weapons and rental armor is something I don't like. I've had a fair amount of experience with this, kind of in Blacklight Retribution, which was probably the first game that I got introduced to Rental Weaponry in, and again, I didn't like it. Rental Weaponry, again, just to kind of basically explain it for you guys who don't actually know, is you earn in-game currency or experience or whatever you want to call it, and when you finally get to a point where you can purchase a weapon, you have a few options. You can purchase the weapon for one day, three days, seven days, or permanent. Usually the permanent option is locked and reserved to those who can pay with the premium currency. Now, again, I don't like this because this means that after all your hard work, you can only have a weapon for a certain amount of time. I don't like that. I like the ability to, once I actually get something, I actually get something. I don't like to finally get something, play with it for seven days, and then have to grind again to get the item back. Obviously you can probably get the item back quite easily just by simply playing the game, but it's a it's a system I don't I haven't I've never really liked at all. It's something that I've kind of ignored for the most part and just kind of moved on from. Anyways, moving on past the payment systems that I've now just talked about, I'm kind of wandering around on a map right now, and this is simply because of the modders that have actually had access to the game. Now, they have modified the game in such a way where you can now load up a few maps here and there. I'll be showing you guys a different a few different maps in just a second. But there is no multiplayer just yet. They are working on getting the multiplayer up and running. But right now, you can load into any map you want, change around game settings if you so desire. You can't really change your arm or anything because there is no main menu that you can access. It kind of looks a little buggy when you do. Uh, simply because, again, it has the whole free-to-play system built into it and it just looks a little weird because you can't really log into the game servers because there aren't any game servers up right now. At least not in terms of how the game should officially run. At least with the Halo Online without unmodded. But, that being said, the modders are trying to work around, as I mentioned before, removing the free-to-play, basically, bullcrap that the game initially had, or will have. And I'm glad for that, because this, this means one of two, or at least, yeah, one of two things, basically. Either 343 Studios, or Industries, sorry, not Studios, I keep thinking Microsoft Studios, or Microsoft Studios as well, to throw them in there, they will now look at this and either think a few things. One there is actually a PC market or a PC demand for the Halo franchise, which there always has been, just occasionally it might go a little bit quiet and so on, but we've always, at least I personally, being a fan of the Halo franchise back when I used to play it on my 360, I think that was the last console I actually had, but I, I liked the Halo franchise. I had Halo 1, Halo CE, and Halo 2, as well as Halo 3, and I actually liked those games. I didn't really play the campaign much, but I did play it enough to actually finish it at least once, and I like the story as well, but the multiplayer was the biggest aspect for me, which is why I probably played Halo Custom Edition for such a long time, because that had a multiplayer community, and at least to this day, it still does, and I love that about that. Now, this basically, again, we had such a demand for the newer Halo games. If you don't already know, only Halo 1, 
or Halo Custom Edition and Halo 2 were ever released to PC. There were rumours here and there that, you know, the other Halo games will be released and maybe the Master Chief Edition was released or will be released as well on PC, but then that never ended up actually happening. I was actually kind of disappointed when I heard about the announcement. I was kind of really hoping that they would bring out the Custom Edition, oh sorry, the Master Chief Edition for PC, but no, they didn't end up doing that. And now we had word of a Halo Online that was going to be PC and I got really excited. Then I heard about the payment model and was rather disappointed. But now, again, that Microsoft and 343 Industries now know that there is a demand, they might actually consider bringing out the PC games or the Halo franchise to PC, which is would, would be a great move for them. Yes, admittedly, there might be a few pirates here and there, but they would make so much sales doing so because I think, again, a lot of PC players would probably really want another Halo game on PC, at least I would anyways. Even if it was another Halo Custom Edition number 2, which would basically be running on, say, even the Halo and uh, Halo 3 engine or maybe even the Halo 4 or 5 engine would be lovely. Just so we can mess around with it and that would be it. I wouldn't really compare that we didn't have the campaign, or really complain, sorry, that we didn't have the campaign for it. I would be happy with that. And now, that was one thing that they could do. The second thing is that they can just ignore the PC community altogether and continue making Halo Online the way that they intend to make it, maybe release it in other countries as well, but keep it the main structure of being a free-to-play title with premium currency and rental weapons. This could work out in our favour, because if they do do this, we already have the files anyways. We, the modders, sorry, no, I'm not saying we as if I'm a modder, but the PC community already has a bunch of modders working on the game anyways. So even if they don't bring out the game that we want, we could probably still just work around that anyways and make our own game basically custom edition number two which i think works out favorable for us anyways we could have the customization the way we well, I, mean, I mean the modders anyways can make the game that they want to make and that would be absolutely i'm fine with that so either we have two options i mean well three if you call call in a season uh what is that season desist whatever it was called, where they actually shut down the modding community altogether which has happened to games in the past at least in some cases anyways that could happen, but the two other options, the bigger ones here, is either 343 Industries and Microsoft can reevaluate their situation and maybe release the uh, Halo games on PC, which again would bring in major sales, or they can go down the route of Halo Online, but the modders will still create a better game anyways. So we don't really lose that in any way. I mean, yes, we do lose if, we, if they don't port over the games, but we don't really lose i mean we still gain a decent game if the modders do this right which i'm looking forward to them actually doing anyways so that's my thoughts on this game anyways or, or, or on the situation that's at hand here and i i know some people aren't really looking forward to halo online because of the way it was announced the russian only thing the whole uh notice of like the payment uh the, the, the payment models and so on and so forth but i think that if this is done right this could mean a great thing this year, for at least the Halo fans that <laughs> reside on PCs. And I'm looking forward to it, I'm looking forward to seeing what would happen. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, what do you guys think will come from this? Will you guys see the Halo franchise on PC in the future? Or do you think that 343 Industries and Microsoft will just ignore that completely, and we might just get a modded version of the game? Anyways, let me know what you think of the game itself, and what you guys think about the Halo franchise coming to PC. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I... We'll see you guys next time. Sell some, everyone.